position, I think maybe 20 years, you know, but wanted out and took the leap, took the jump, did what it what was necessary to get out of that job, out of that position and go into something else that seemed very promising. It wasn't eight months in before she became clinically depressed from the new job, the one she leaped into. And I want to start this conversation by asking a question. How are you building bridges in your life that will safeguard you from the next economic crisis, the next global pandemic, the next unforeseen circumstance? I'm going to ask that question again. How are you building bridges in your life that will safeguard you from the next crisis, the next global pandemic, the next unforeseen circumstance? I think this is a question that is necessary to have because when you're talking about building bridges, we have to look at what a bridge does. A bridge typically is built to carry an individual or a group of people over a body of water. It connects two pieces of land over an island or, or, or a river or a lake, if you will. It's a bridge that ultimately, as I, as I want to put it in this, in this framework, it ultimately safeguards you from danger. It ultimately safeguards you from danger, making your transition from one spot to another seamless. Seamless. So what systems have you put in place professionally, personally, commercially, domestically that will help make your transition from point A to point B or point B to point C seamless? What systems have you put in place? Or what systems are you putting in place? This is an important question to ask. And it is not just for business owners, entrepreneurs, or anything. It's for, in, it's for everyone. Anyone who has uh, had any circumstance in their life that has ultimately shook their world, and we all have had that over the last couple of years. It's called coronavirus. And I think many of us have approached life or should be approaching life from a different stance now that if that happens again, or if something similar happens again, I want to be better prepared. And you are better prepared when you build a bridge. What does that look like? I, I know quite a few teachers. I know quite a few people in the education industry. And one thing that they are, have to get trained on beyond their certification beyond their 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 undergraduate degree, beyond their licensing and all of the things that they need to just teach the students. One of the things that they have to get trained on is CPR, how to resuscitate someone in the event that an, an, an occurrence takes place. CPR training is a bridge to safeguard that institution, that teacher, those students from unforeseen or potential danger. Another safeguard in that same, we can take that same industry, fire drills. How many of you remember fire drills back when you were in school? Those were, I remember taking, having to do fire drills and they were fun for us growing up because it was giving us a break from class. We just loved when the announcement came through over the PA that we were having a fire drill because, oh my God, we can get out of class and Stand, even though we were just lining up in the hallway and going outside, it was just like a little almost mini recess that we could take <laughs> to give us freedom from just sitting at a desk and listening to a lecture all day. But fire drills are a safeguard. It, they are a bridge protecting you from potential danger. Now, this is this is so important for us. Some in, some things that in, in our regular life in our normal life, in our everyday life, insurance. What is insurance? <laughs> Some people think it's a, a huge ripoff, and, and I, I can't say that I don't disagree <laughs> to, a, to, a, to a certain level, but it is a bridge. It is a safeguard 
I know many of us are thinking right now, okay, a safeguard, he's talking about uh, maybe saving money or, or accessing uh, loans or, or, or having insurance or uh, being able to uh, insure my home, my car, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things, yes, are bridges, especially when it comes to your personal wealth, your, your, your uh, uh, business, all of those things. But a safeguard or a bridge also can be just understanding and having a clear perspective about the vision that you have for your life, having a clear understanding of what it is that you want from your life, be it your career, your personal life, your relationships, your domestic life, whatever it is, having a clear vision, guess what is a safeguard, is a bridge. And I want to say that because I, I I know if I have a friend of mine who during the pandemic, uh, had already been uneasy and just frustrated with with her her job but during the pandemic it became even twofold and just just before things began to kind of break and open up it was like I want something different I want to do something different I just can't do this anymore I don't like it whatever whatever had been in that 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 position I think maybe 20 years you know but wanted out and took the leap took the jump did what it what was necessary to get out of that job, out of that position, and go into something else that seemed very promising. It wasn't eight months in before she became clinically depressed from the new job, the one she leaped into, that she just knew was going to be the cherry on top of her life. It caused her depression. Why is that? Why did she end up in the job that that ultimately ended her in depression and wanting out? Because she was not clear about her vision. She was not clear about what she wanted going in. All she knew is I want out. And not having a plan or or not even a plan, a vision, <laughs> not even a plan not having a vision of what she wanted to go into, be it the culture, be it not only the people that you want to serve, the people that you want to work with, but the culture that you want to work in, the kind of things you want to do, how you want to serve. Not having a vision of that can lend you in a worse position than the the, the box that you created in the previous season of your life. You get what I'm saying? So you have to understand that a vision is a safeguard. Understanding what you want, where you want to go, who you want to serve, how you want to serve them is a safeguard to keep you from, in this case, depression, upset, frustration, disappointment, sadness, all of those things, all of those things. She took the leap out of the box, but had not built a bridge. I want you to get that. Many of us are quick to take the leap out of the box but had not build a bridge. The bridge is the vision that you have. You have to take time to identify those things because it'll keep you from wasting your time, your energy, and in some cases, your money. Many of us, you're going out getting, becoming, and I, and I did it, and I'm speaking from experience when it comes to this. I, I remember early on as an entrepreneur getting involved in, uh, various businesses. And I mean, I sold everything from cutlery <laughs> knives <laughs> that you use in the kitchen to, 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 uh, uh, insurance. And although the business model was, was, was beautiful and the, 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 the excitement and everything that they sold me on sounded amazing. The business itself was not for me, but it wasn't until after I had spent $500 joining, $1,500 joining, wasting two or three hours on a Saturday or on a Thursday night or a Tuesday night, sitting in the seminar, sitting in the session, wasting time on a phone call, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't until I had wasted all that time and money that I realized this is not for me. Yes, can I do it? But it doesn't fit what I want. And it was after that season of my life that I said, you know what, I'm, I have to identify what I want so that when these opportunities come, I know when they're for me and when they're not. That's a bridge, a safeguard, safeguard that saves you time, resources, money, 
relationships, because many times these people that invite you, they're your friends, they're your family, and they're they're counting on you or they're excited about you joining in. And then when you get in, pay your money, register, and you only last two weeks, they, they kind of looking at you sideways because they were dependent on you to build their bottom line, to build their 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 pyramid or their structure of, of the, the business that they're building. <laughs> A vision will save you and your family and your community. Without a vision, this is the Bible, the greatest book ever written. Without a vision, the people what perish. It doesn't say you it doesn't say you don't progress. It doesn't say you that you don't have opportunity. It doesn't say that you don't don't uh, uh, excel in certain areas, but you perish. Why do you perish? Because you have not found that space the grace, the people, the position that you have been created for. When you have a vision, it makes all of that clear. And keep in mind, and I tell people all the time that when I've taught classes on writing a vision and making a vision, a vision is meant to be revised. My vision now compared to what it was 15 years ago, even five years ago, is, is, is a little different. It's been edited. It's a, it's a, a, your vision is a, a, a living, breathing document that is meant to be revisited, updated, edited, revised, all of that. <laughs> Whenever you feel it needs to, it can be every year. It can be every five years. It can be every six months because you may hear something, see something, get exposed to something that alters it just slightly. Oh yeah, I want to go do this, but I also want to add this element to it. I want to do that, but I want to add this bullet point to it. A vision is a safeguard for your life. When you leap out of the box, as I'm speaking of with my friend here, who's now doing much better, I want to just put that out there. When you leap out the box, though, without having a bridge, you run because you got all this ambition, but the ambition is illy directed because it's the, it's the energy that you need to get out of the box, but it's not the energy that you need to cross the bridge. You know what I mean? And ultimately, when you leap out of the box without a bridge, you're literally leaping out of the box into the water. Now you got to swim across the river because you haven't prepared a bridge to walk across. So now you've got to almost drown to get to your destination. Now you've got to almost drown to get to the place that you that you that you think is better than where you are you'll leap out of the box and all of a sudden you'll you'll see that the destination is a little further than you thought <laughs> the water is a little deeper than you thought you know what i mean there 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 there's sharks in the water that you didn't know about you get what i'm saying this is what happens when you leap without a plan you leap without a vision you leap without getting getting understanding getting wisdom many times that happens and you recover thank god you may get a setback here and there you may have to take a minute to pause and re regroup. But there are some cases where you may not. You don't know until after you've taken the leap. Why not safeguard yourself? Have you ever moved to another a home or moved out of one home into another or out of an apartment to a home or out of one state to another? Have you ever had to pack a box to move? If so, you understand that those boxes have a risk associated with them. They have the they have their they they have they have the potential to get lost, misplaced, mishandled, damaged, even sent to the wrong address. When you characterize and live your life in the box and expect the box to take you to new heights, new territories, you're ultimately lending your destiny to the limited vision of this container in hopes that it will bring you the pleasure, the joy that you desire. Not realizing that it could be damaged, lost, stolen, misplaced, sent to the wrong address. You need to come out of the box because what you do learn and build today, tomorrow, may be useless, outdated, obsolete, irrelevant. 
Now I know I, I know I'm painting the picture of a bridge so beautifully, but I want you to understand that the bridge, first of all, must be built. So that's going to take time, energy, as we talked about in last week's episode. It's going to take uh, uh, some wit. It's going to take some ingenuity, some 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 sweat, some sweat equity. You get what I'm saying? It's going to take all of that to build the bridge. But the bridge, once it's built, not only will safeguard you, but it'll safeguard those that you're attached to, those you're responsible for taking, those you're responsible for helping cross over. So you're not building the bridge just for yourself. You're building it for the generation that is attached to you. You're building a safeguard, a safe transit, a safe way for people behind you to come. It's a, it's, it's a tall task, I know. But when you've been called to it, you understand the necessity of it and you don't mind putting in the work. This is what I like to say. The path to destiny is development. And that development happens as you build. But the question still remains, what are you building? A box or a bridge? I hope this episode helps you arrive to your next, your next goal, your next dream, your next vision, your next business, your next opportunity without the threat of drowning on the way. Build bridges, not boxes. This has been the Build on Beauty podcast where beauty is born skin deep. I'm your host, Cornell Germain. Until next time, let your soul be made whole. Take care.